Hello and welcome to the Merle and Locke podcast. I'm Merle. And I'm Locke. Set sail and low expectations for everything nerd. A company by healthy, albeit shapeful, help and pointless banter, lack of focus, and questionably acquired knowledge. And more. <laughs> and more. <laughs> All right. So you actually had a topic for us today, Locke. Why don't you tell us what that is? I was just doing my random video searching out of my sheer boredom. That's just what I do. I came across this person who was just kind of complaining about this exploit in a game that both you and I play very often. It made me think about how much people like to use these exploits, and some people use them far beyond the amount of time that they should, and they'll just keep abusing it until something's done about it. I, I can think that there are many other games that you and I play where people have used these exploits, which isn't a bad thing. It's kind of like your your coder's best and worst friend. It's something that you love to kind of figure out where you went wrong, and you got to go back and solve the issue. But in, in the case of the video, he was talking about World of Warcraft and using a certain toy to become undetectable by other people. So in like PvP scenarios, you could essentially kill other people without ever being seen. You can't be targeted. The only way that you can be attacked back is through AoE damage or area of effect. That's cheap. <laughs> <laughs> he called Blizzard lazy in the sense that they did not solve the issue, they turned around and stopped people from being able to use that toy in war mode or PvP scenarios. And that's fair. Which is fair. I think it's a legitimate thing that somebody would do until they solve the issue. But he sees it as a lazy means of solving the issue. <laughs> okay, but but he he was a person that would regularly utilize this this exploit. Oh yeah, and he he went on to then say that they could use this toy in even PV, PVE scenarios to kind of save their life, like quick go back to the toy to become invisible so that you don't take any more damage. And I went, all right. There's always those people right there going to keep telling you about these exploits. And I would see it as an opportunity to then turn around and either turn it off for everyone until the problem solved, or you know keep keep it that whole PvP scenario so that the less people that are getting angered by this. That's the scummiest thing about it, right? Like the whole using it against like Pv PVE elements. It, it that seems all right. Like trying to like having a means in which to you know survive an encounter when you're playing against. Uh, the environment but using it like uh, having that and the ability to utilize it in pvp engagements that's that is very scummy wholeheartedly i'm totally for blizzard no longer giving people the access to it in those in those scenarios because because it's it's cheating yeah and it's it's kind of it's bullshit <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah <laughs> As far as exploits go, and like people taking advantage of, like I'm all about exploits because, like, I think exploits are are pretty cool, especially like people figuring them out. But if it's something that gives you the upper hand over another player, that's where it kind of I kind of draw the line because I'm like, that's that's crappy, you know. Especially if the other player has no idea about this exploit, that's crazy. Now. When you mentioned the whole, uh, everything about the exploits, right? Like the first thing that came to my mind was speedrunning exploits. That's what I thought of initially. I, I know, like I remember seeing one for Super Mario 64, yeah? It was like an exploit where you would be like at the base of the stairs, you know, where you jump through the picture of Bowser's level or, or you get access to that picture to jump through. And you go to the base of the stairs and like you kind of like hop backwards or something like really fast, mash the the jump button until you like you kind of like glitch through and gain access to like the final boss like from the beginning. That's a hilarious ex exploit. Uh, you'll ha you'll have to like look into it sometime. 
but like I I only saw like a short like video on it. I think I did see that one, but it it's been a while, so I'd have to go back and take a look. All right, and now as far as like speed running goes and stuff, like that's it's kind of fun having those exploits. I, I realize it 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 creates this kind of unfair thing where it's like yeah, but like if you're challenging other against other players, it, it does give you an unfair advantage if you know the exploit and the other person doesn't. But I mean, at the same time, it's like who who does speed running? Uh, well, I I feel like that's a that's not too far fetched of an idea to see in a Mario game. Yeah, you know, previous Mario games, there was that that one level. I think it was at the very beginning or close to it. I forget which world. Don't pin it on me. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> there's the one level where you actually jumped up and over, and then there were the three tubes that you could go down into, to go into the three different other zones. It was either like five one seven one or so you were able to go all the way from world. I think it was maybe one three, but I could be wrong. And you could essentially skip four or five levels ahead, and then you could keep doing that. There were certain certain other maps that would have the same thing, where you just took the elevator up, and if you just stayed along the floor and didn't jump or anything like that, you just walk across and bam. New levels. <laughs> <laughs> now, I think, I think like, it, as far as the speed running thing goes, I think the only time I've actually utilized an exploit was when I was playing. Because I, I mentioned before how a, a buddy of mine and myself, we, we often return to the Halo series, you know, to try and do some achievement hunting. I mean, it has a lot of achievements to get so it's something that i've already accepted i'll never complete it but i was going for this for this series of achievements for halo reach and it was uh completing all the levels within a certain time limit and each level if you complete it within the time limit you get the achievement it was doable pretty pretty easily for the most part but there's this one level i was just having so much trouble with and i was like i don't know how i'm supposed to supposed to do this because like there's like locked areas and stuff that you can't get access to and uh, until after you complete like some of these checkpoints yeah and then the and then the path opens opens up for you so that you can continue and you can continue to run the level and I just could not get the time down. I'm like, I, I have no other choice. I have to look it up. So I like I looked it up to see like how other people were able to accomplish it so quickly. The only thing that popped up was like this really big exploit. It was like to go in this area, right? And there's a there's a forklift sitting there. And you can you can jump and you can operate the, the forklift. And you take the forklift and you go to this door that's supposed to open up later on. And you get like really close to it, like all the way butted up against against it, so that when you get out of the vehicle, you kind of go through the wall as you're getting out of the vehicle, and then it just like pops you up on the other side, and then you can finish the level. And I was like, that that's stupid. <laughs> I'm like, first of all, like I was like, I love this exploit; it's pretty cool, but at the same time. Not being able to get this achievement without doing the exploit? I mean, come on. <laughs> you know, I was like, there has to be a way to do it without the exploit. But I just couldn't figure it out. So I was like, screw it. And I did the exploit. It worked flawlessly. And I I got the achievement. And I was like, okay, yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I just I didn't I didn't feel like I had any other choice. It felt kind of cheaty, but at the same time, I'm like, uh, I mean, it's a solo experience right now. I'm not cheating anybody else out of it. I guess this exploit is, you know, pretty widely known. So I mean, who cares? So I was perfectly okay with that, and and I feel like the other times I've used exploits, it wasn't necessarily something to that extent with the with the Halo speed run. I remember exploiting AI pathing, right? Like the, the bot paths that they follow. I was playing The Witcher, The Witcher 3, and I put it on its max difficulty that I was playing through the story. And I got to this point, I had to go in like a wizard's tower or something. 
and I went down to a basement and there is this this huge elemental creature that spawned down there. It was such a high level that it had like question marks on on its level bar and I was like, "Oh shit." So <laughs> I was like, "I don't know how I'm going to like I I went after him a couple of times. Like I could have I could have went on and done anything else, you know, and gained levels and what have you, you know, and come back to it later, but I was there and I was like, "I need to do this." What I did was like I got up like on these stairs I was combating, I was peppering the guy, you know, with hits here and there. And then I rolled back onto these stairs and he couldn't follow me. Uh, he kind of got stuck and then he started like walking away. And then I would, when he'd turn around, I'd go at him, pepper him a couple of times. And then I'd retreat back to the stairs because he couldn't, he couldn't get to me. I was like, this is, this is cheating, but, <laughs> but this is the only way to do it uh, at this moment. Cause I've, I cannot fight this guy. And it took me, so long it was absurd how long it took me to kill this guy i must have been there for like at least an hour and a half just like constantly going down peppering him running back up the stairs went from turn around go down pepper him a couple of times and run back and i was just go back and forth like that by the end of it you know like i i defeated him and it didn't feel like it was worth it because I was like, "Good God, that took forever." <laughs> <laughs> uh, and there, there was one other exploit. Now that I'm talking about it, that I used for The Witcher, I wouldn't say it was as cheaty, but you know, I was, I went to this spot where there's like these giants, right? And I, and I was trying to, since I was playing on the hardest difficulty, I needed to level up and get stronger because I was just having such a hard time. It's just a squishy boy. Yeah, just a squishy little boy. And I went up onto this, into these ruins, and there was all these giants around. What I would do, I would kill a giant. I think I would like rest, or maybe like save and quit, and then come back in or something. And as soon as I came back in, the giant was there again. And I would kill the giant again. And then I would, you know, rest or save or quit, come back, the giant was there again. And I just kept doing that until like there was this whole plethora of i think it's actually on my my steam profile the picture of all the giants <laughs> that i kept because their corpses always stayed there you know every time i killed one their corpse would stay there and i had this huge pile of giants sitting all around me and uh and i took that picture and it was like i, I said like pwned or something like that you know pwned pwned was cool at the time yeah that when I that was that was a it. thing <laughs> yeah, that was the thing that people said. Uh, Get but, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it was it was such a funny thing. I gained like all these levels and everything started getting a lot easier for me because I was, you know, doing these little exploits here and there to to get me by and and help me to gain levels. Uh, I think that's those are the only two things I could remember doing for The Witcher because I love that. I spent way too much time on those witcher games i absolutely adored the witcher series i still have not played the witcher i i think i had the witcher 3 on my xbox but still haven't played it oh man it was so good i did think of at least two other exploits and one of them we currently use in one of our games so one of the games that we play is Sketchy's Contract. Can you think of the exploit that I'm thinking of? The exploit and Sketchy's Contract. I'll help you get there. So that big hermit crab <laughs> in in the second the second level. Oh, where he would like if he where his claws if he gets just close enough to the window they clip through the wall. So all we do is shoot at his claws and he dies. And we, we're nowhere near him. <laughs> it's just because he is a big model and his claws just clip right on through. Yep, and he doesn't doesn't attack you back. Nope, does not attack you. I mean, he, he tries. You know, like once you attack him, he runs up to the window acting like he's going to try to attack you, but he can't do anything. I mean, we we stay far enough away from the window in case he does happen to get you. <laughs> yeah, I like that. I like that exploit because, like, we've we've run afoul of this monster many a time, where we would open a door 
and you know he would see us and we wouldn't be paying attention and i'd be like oh crap and like try to run back through the door and he'd follow us through and then he would just annihilate everyone in that hallway or like uh uh hermit crab's loose <laughs> <laughs> yep giant yeah. hermit crab on the loose uh i remember like warning you guys being like he's in the hallways now <laughs> 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 he's amongst us he's amongst us trying to pretend to be us clatter in his claws <laughs> oh i do remember one more i, I remember okay. one more exploit <laughs> from lethal company oh, which one uh, it this? was okay so this is one that one of our buddies showed me we went to this power room right where the where the fuse is you know if you if you take out this fuse in the in the building, there's just one fuse in the building. If you take it, it shuts off all the power in in the building. He showed me that like he grabbed the fuse, and then he jumped up onto this little platform that was beside you know the little plug-in for the fuse, and then he would do this thing where I think he would like crouch up and down as fast as he can and like look down and and then keep jumping or something and then he, he would glitch through the world and then if he glitched through the world it just popped him back into existence right at the entry of the building and he would still have all of his loot on him and so he would get there and then you just turn around and you go out the door and made like a free little you know teleporting type thing worth all your loot and he showed me that and i tried it i did it a couple of times i think it was like next time we jumped on together they patched it <laughs> yep yeah so he he was like he was like i think they actually patched this but i'm gonna try it anyways and i was like okay so he grabbed the fuse and he stood up there and then uh he did it and he and he tell and he went out of the world he fell through the world i was like okay so hopefully that worked and I'm going to make my way out the, the normal way because, you know, we made the agreement like he will give it a go. I'll go out the doorway and we'll see if it worked. And so I made my way out of the building and I went to the ship to check the radar to see like where he was. And yes, in fact, he was he was dead in the middle of nothingness <laughs> like <laughs> like him, all of his loot. The fuse, everything was just outside the world and stuck out there. They they patched it up, and I was like, "Oh no!" Uh, <laughs> let's see. At that point, I feel like if you were testing that, you'd probably be like, "Give me whatever good stuff you have. You go ahead and try it. I'll meet you out there." We had way too much faith in. Uh, yeah, you did. In- <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and lost that stuff, so... But surely but, they didn't fix this. Uh, <laughs> you live and you learn, I guess. Do you have any, any more examples? Yeah, no, there was one more that I thought of. It made me think of Larian Studios with uh, Baldur's Gate, because I, I remember reading the patch notes. Even though I never got to this point in Baldur's Gate 3, I still haven't even made it to Baldur's Gate. I don't think you have either. Nope. People used to kick... Cazador off of whatever platform he was on. For those of you who have not played or don't know who Cazador is, he's essentially a giant vampire. What do vampires have? They have wings. So people would kick him and he would fall and die and you would lose whatever loot was down there, but you would win the fight. You wouldn't have to worry about defeating this giant vampire who is really strong. <laughs> Larry and fixed it in the patch notes one day, and they said, Cazador now remembers he can fly, uh, <laughs> so you can no longer <laughs> kick him off of the platform. <laughs> oh my god, that's amazing! Well done, Larry. So, oh, kudos well to done. them. I, I love oh. them kind of adding a little <laughs> little twist in there, like putting it... A uh, little in, humor. Yeah, yeah, a little humor. Uh, they're, they're such good developers. Oh, I love absolutely. them, like how humorous they are. You know, <laughs> the little tisk tisk. Yeah, and it's like, all right, fine, I, you got I, us. I, I think that they really do look at the players and go, you know what? Good for you for finding that out. But we're just gonna yeah. fix that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love how like how often they put up posts where they're like, "You people are monsters." Okay, here's a new patch. 
<laughs> you guys weren't meant to really do that, but you know what? Good job. We we like your yeah. style. Here's something. Bravo. <laughs> uh, bravo. Thank you for joining us on the Marlin Lock Podcast. If you enjoyed this banter, please consider becoming a patron by going to patreon.com slash Merle and Locke, or simply follow the link in the description. Thank you.